My name is Andrea Kim and I'm the director and producer of the documentary film The Invisible Oregon. Currently we are in Accra, Ghana and we actually just finished filming here yesterday. After four months of working on this project, both in the United States, in Duke University and here, I finally feel like I'm at a point where I know what this documentary is actually about. So at large, The Invisible Organ is about female reproductive health, both at a personal level, an experiential level, what new truths emerge from engaging with this very intimate part of the body, and also at a global level, as in how can these ideas translate in a global setting, particularly in low resource settings when women don't have basic access to um, female reproductive health services. The way that we address all these questions is through technology. Technology is really what strings all these stories together. More specifically, the invisible organ follows the story of the Caloscope, which is a low-cost, portable tool that can be used for screening for cervical cancer, particularly in low-resourced areas. As you can see, it's quite slim, and it connects to a mobile phone or a tablet. The camera fits into the caloscope device like this. What's interesting about the caloscope is, is that it's not only effective in a practical level in terms of delivering care, but it's also designed with women's comfort in mind. And it's designed to address structural barriers to healthcare. And that ranges from you know, the power dynamic and the shame and stigma of having a doctor inspect your vaginal walls using a cold metal speculum to you know, a woman having to take multiple bus rides, going from clinic and clinic to find a physician who would be willing to inspect her, her vaginal area, even though she's not showing symptoms of already having cancer. Basically, I'm following a story of a team of incredibly inspirational women who are banding together in order to address this problem. And our community ranges from biomedical engineers researching how to develop the best technologies to serve women. They include oral historians who are interested to really hear the stories of women about their perceptions of their reproductive anatomy, which is a question that we're often not asked or even think to ask. Our team includes medical humanists who are searching for this intersection between medicine, technology, and the humanities, which unfortunately is always you know, found in disparate fields when really we're investigating the same human questions in life and care. We've interviewed health workers, really inspiring health workers here on the ground who are, you know, really working against the odds to deliver the care that their patients need, spreading awareness and giving lectures. There's a degree of dedication that I've been witnessing here as a documentarian that I would really just love to share to the world and share how, you know, this technology can, can change things change how business is done and I want to share how people from low and middle income countries are open to new technologies, open to new ways of doing things and changing social structures that um, aren't working. With my background, I, I'm working with an incredible team and we've been following Mercy Siodu, who is the lead designer of the Caloscope, who is from Ghana and we've joined her as she's come back to her community to introduce the technology that she has developed. So this is a story that really captures a wide range of humanity for what it means to a community when women don't have the basic access to reproductive health needs, to artificial intelligence algorithms that can detect precancerous symptoms in the image of a cervix that is being implemented in the caloscope as well. So, very exciting stuff. I'm so thrilled to share it and I would love to have some funds for post-production and I hope to hear from you soon.